professional athlete is out of shape. I'm very disappointed. Luke is really hot right now. There was a lot of contact. He got hit in the face. Yeah, that's BS. The reason why you don't see any effort on defense is because he don't have the energy nor the passion. When did you realize where he's like, you know what, looking in the mirror like, damn. Got an extra one of these. That is the 16th technical foul of the year for Luka Doncic. Uh, oh, they just threw out Luka. He's not in great shape. You got to go full on pizza and, and beer to get like that. To get that far out of shape, you got to really try. You are back. 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 When it comes to young stars in the NBA, Luka Doncic is the NBA's golden child. At the age of just 24 years old, Luka has already been named to the All-NBA First Team four times, and with this, he has yet again added his name to the record books. Luka has made history, and I really want to emphasize just how tremendously impressive being named a top five player in the league four times in your first five years really is. For comparison, Hall of Famers such as Isaiah Thomas, Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan all had a mere three. Players we remember as all-time young superstars such as LeBron James, only two first-team All-NBAs in their first five years. In the post-merger era, Luka joins Tim Duncan and Larry Bird as the only players to ever accomplish this feat. And this summer, we are now getting the news that Luka is looking a lot slimmer. We have seen just how tremendously impactful a good summer weight loss session can be. Not only did Nikola Jokic shed a lot of weight to become the MVP, but also this season Jokic has taken things to the next level and with his newfound weight loss, with his newfound spryness, is leading the Denver Nuggets to the NBA championship. So what's up guys, Mike here, and today we are in a groundhog year type of situation because last summer we also had a slim looking Luka and then we had what I would say is the most disappointing season of Luka's career so far. It is never a good thing to see a young superstar star's career trajectory, at least when it comes to team success, go backwards, but that is what happened this year. The Dallas Mavericks missed out on the playoffs. They have seemingly bet it all on Kyrie Irving, and at this point, I think there needs to be some real, real urgency by the Dallas Mavericks to figure things out before it is too late. Overseas, Luka has his country of Slovenia ranked seventh in the entire world, and if you watch those national team games, he is a relentless captain on the court who is willing his national team to huge wins at a very young age. What we have seen from Luka Doncic time and time again is that he both loves and cares about basketball and winning. So yes, this last season was disappointing, but if Luka Doncic is really about to come back as an improved player with this weight loss, that is going to be scary for the rest of the NBA. Because I wanna just take us back a season ago when Luka was on pace to still become the greatest young player in NBA history. In his first five seasons, Luka has averaged over 27 points, eight assists, and eight rebounds per game. That puts him among all-time historic company. Only Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James have also averaged at least 25 points, five assists, and five rebounds per game during their first five seasons. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to say that this video is sponsored by my friends at DraftKings because all season long teams have gone through ups and downs but now the lights are shining the brightest and that means everyone is on the cusp of greatness and if that is not enough to get your blood pumping well then DraftKings has an incredible offer for us all new customers have to do is download DraftKings use my promo code Corzamba bet five dollars and instantly receive two hundred dollars in bonus bets yes that is right bet just five dollars and get two hundred dollars and bonus bets. And if you're wondering what you could use those bonus bets on, try same game parlays, where you can combine multiple bets, such as which team will win and by how much, for a shot at even bigger winnings. And if mobile sports betting is still not available in your area, do not worry, you can still get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Which means, guys, download the DraftKings app right now. Use promo code CORZEMBA, bet $5, and if you are a new customer, you are receiving $200. That is, again, $200 in bonus bets in Instantly. That's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you again to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, guys, let's get back into the video.
In my recent video about Victor Wembanyama, I looked into the GOAT race and determined what exactly it would take to be the NBA's GOAT. And throughout NBA history, it looks like the qualifications would be as follows. Four championship wins, six title appearances, four MVPs, 10 first team all NBAs, and 14 all-star appearances. These are, based on past history, the minimum threshold to really be considered the greatest of all time. With four first team all NBAs already, I'll just throw out the question, if Luka was on the Boston Celtics instead of Jason Tatum. If he had a roster that was competing at that level, don't we think with everything we have seen with Luka, there is a chance he'd be able to accomplish this? I will say, I do, because more importantly to me, when Luka has at least a team that can get him to the playoffs, because Luka has not had much in Dallas, he has, again, statistically proven to be one of the best of all time. As in a 28 game sample size between the ages of 20 and 22, Luka has averaged 32 and a half points, 9.3 rebounds, and 7.9 assists per game. Those numbers stand by themselves. However, to put them into perspective, in an NBA playoff basketball setting, Luka is one of only two players players to have ever averaged at least 30 points and seven assists between those ages. Throw away the rebounds. The other player, is Michael Jordan. I could keep hitting us with lists like this. I really could. On the stat sheet and in terms of individual awards in the NBA, Luka looks amazing. But of course, stats are one thing. We need that playoff success. But that's where Luka has passed the eye test when he has a team as well. He has shown he wants all the pressure on him. He wants the ball in his hands with the game on the line. And he also will deliver when he's given the chance. He has the clutch moments to show for it. Do we remember that in his first ever playoffs, against a prime defensive healthy Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, which is an amazing defensive wing duo. In game four of the first round of the playoffs, at the age of 21, Luka not only had 43 points, 17 rebounds, and 13 assists, but also he finished the game with this. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! A game-winning buzzer beater in the playoffs? I know this was the bubble, but I mean, when LeBron knocked down his first game-winning buzzer beater in the playoffs, that shot was tremendously hyped. This shot by Luka has seemingly gone forgotten. I'm sure it will re-emerge when he is finally given a good team to compete with, and we are watching old playoff clips of him, because also last season, Luka proved he is that guy. Against the top-seeded Phoenix Suns, a team that was playing for everything, a team that was playing for Chris Paul legacy. An undermanned Dallas Mavericks team took a game five loss and were down three to two when Devin Booker and Chris Paul certainly made things personal with Luka. Book was openly looking at the camera and calling Luka a crybaby. And so even after a loss, 27 point lead, down goes Johnson, three, Luka bullseye. Deep in his bag like the fries are at the bottom. Luka Doncic is absolutely putting on a show here. This was just last season. Dallas won games six and seven against the top seeded Suns by a combined 60 points. At this point, I feel like the fact that Luka did not play in the playoffs this year is a travesty. Looking back at Luka's career though, what is missing? Well, a skinny Luka with all of the success he's already had is certainly going to strike fear into the rest of the NBA as long as the Mavericks can get it together. At the end of the day, Nikola Jokic is showing us right now, you earn respect when you win a championship. Jokic was a two-time MVP, but people are talking about him on a new level now. The same thing applied to Giannis. Giannis was a defensive player of the year and MVP before he won a title, but it was when he won a championship when everyone started putting the real respect on his name. And at this point with Luka, it's not about being the GOAT. It's about getting started and earning your place among the NBA greats where it matters the most on the playoff court. The fact that the Dallas Mavericks fumbled their roster this badly is not only inexcusable, again, to me, it is a bit frightening. Did you know that Tracy McGrady, before his injuries, was not only the player who Kobe Bryant famously said this about. The guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. He had all the skills and all the athleticism um, 
but he was 6'9", and he was really, really tough to figure out. But that also, despite his injuries, T-Mac was still a two-time member of the first team All-NBA and finished his career with seven All-NBA selections in total. Twice, T-Mac finished fourth in the MVP voting. Meanwhile, Paul Pierce was never first team All-NBA and had four total All-NBA selections, and Dwayne Wade just finished his past T-Mac with two first team All-NBA selections, but eight total selections. My point being, when it comes to individual awards, T-Mac is right Right there with Dwayne Wade. Does anyone speak about T-Mac like that? No, and that is because as after T-Mac left the Toronto Raptors, he emerged as a superstar for the Orlando Magic only. T-Mac had joined Orlando thinking that he was signing with another megastar. As that summer, the Orlando Magic also bet it all on Grant Hill. He was, without a doubt, one of the best players in the NBA. This was supposed to be a superstar duo. Only unfortunately, Grant Hill would have one of the worst injuries we've ever seen. Hill was only able to play in 18 games during his first two seasons with T-Mac. And then in year three, Hill was only able to play in 29 games. During this time, Orlando also almost signed Tim Duncan, as Duncan heavily considered leaving for Orlando and actually has said he may have swung that way. Only then head coach Doc Rivers fumbled the deal horribly. During a dinner with Tim Duncan, Grant Hill, and Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers told Tim Duncan's girlfriend that family was not allowed on the Orlando Magic's team plane. And according to Grant Hill, this is what swung Tim Duncan's decision. And I understand with Doc, a man has a code, I get it, but maybe uh, buy a bigger plane with a cabin in the back for the Duncan family? Why don't you get two cabins in case his relatives want to stop by? It's Tim Duncan. Duncan. So Tracy McGrady to me is the best example of a player who could have ended up as an all-time unforgettable legend if only things had gone a bit different. Between the ages of 23 and 24, T-Mac averaged 30.2 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 5.5 assists per game. So at this point, the pictures of a skinny Luka are of course very promising. They show us what I think we already know though, that Luka Doncic loves basketball, he will do anything to win, and he has shown he has the relentless work ethic to do that. Every single summer that man is out here working. So at this point in time, I am sorry Mavs fans, but I will say it, Luka, give them one more chance, but we have watched Dallas makes such bad moves. They had an all-star in Kristaps Porzingis on their team. Somehow they could never figure out what to do with him. But then with the Washington Wizards averaged over 23 points per game on almost 50% shooting. The Mavs couldn't have used him this year? Or how about Jalen Brunson, the guy that helped Luka get to the Western Conference Finals? The Mavericks gave up on him and watched as Brunson led the Knicks to the second round of the playoffs this year. Remember when the Mavericks traded Seth Curry to the Sixers for Josh Richardson? Luka would give about anything for Seth Curry on his roster right now. Instead, we've got a lot of guys who have been trying. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video in the future. If you're already subscribed, thank you for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.